Scottish traditional music is around me every day. So even though I think I'm not thinking about it, I am thinking about it. Um, the tunes and the sort of familiarity of the people, um, the gigs that I do, all of that is it's either in my diary, it's in my head, it's in my car, you know, it's, it's my job as well. Um, so it's always kind of in my head. Um, and the kind of ability of Scottish people to interpret the music and say what they think about it, I, I think that kind of, I hear that a lot as well, oh I don't like that, oh I really like that, so it's quite a kind of open thing for me. Sure. I think our music does have that identity and sometimes you get confused and think, oh that's definitely Scottish, actually it's, it's not Scottish, it's Canadian. Mm -hmm. So. I suppose what I'm saying is, yeah, I, th I, th I think it has its own label, yeah. Okay. It's changed a lot uh, for me personally and the work that I do. Um, for instance, I used to play at village dances every week in the borders, particularly. Uh, there's very little of that now, apart from Shetland, where they, they still have their little pockets of village halls and they do their dances, the lancers and things. Uh, I, th I would say there's a lot more country dancing in terms of you know the dancing part of, of uh, Scottish music and I play a lot more at those now than I, I used to so I, I have the proof there that you know I'm not doing one anymore and I'm doing another um, I think compositions have changed a lot I think there's a lot more expression and uh, adventure and change it's not you still do get the A B kind of eight bars and eight bars format, but things have expanded a lot and they're being recognised and used by television and radio and uh, one off pieces, you know, so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to have a purpose. So I think compositions changed a lot. Um And is that still traditional music? Yeah. I think it is. It's new music, but it's still got that identity of well yeah, you can hear little bits of melody, but it does go off as well, so for me yeah, it is still, so yeah, it's still traditional. And so I would say that my teaching has become really important to me. Um, I enjoy it and it's a lot of fun but I take it very seriously. Uh, I think about it a lot and I have a good relationship with my students, it's not just one hour a week and I feel that way that they get more out of it and I kind of get to tap into what else they're doing. So my teaching is really important. Um, expressing myself more through my music, I think I feel more able to do that now and more confident to do it because of all the things I've done up until now. They've kind of helped me get to where I am and I would take more risks. Whereas before I probably would think, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to try that because it might not work. So that affects my playing and my composition and my teaching. Well, I thought long and hard about this and the first thing I came up with was uh, our voices, our speaking voices, because if, for instance, you go to a concert in Scotland, it's usually, say it's whoever it is, there's a, you hear the Scottish accent, if you tune in to Travel and Folk or Take the Floor, for instance, Robbie Shepherd, you have this Scottish accent before you even hear the music. So. That alone, for me, makes it very Scottish. Um, I think the the landscapes we have have influenced the music and the songs that have been written. Um, therefore, you know, the influence of that again shows that kind of um, just the the choices that we have. We can go somewhere that up to Shetland that has no trees, or you can go, you know into the city, out into the country, go to the seaside, and, we, and you can do that in a lot of countries, but... You think there's a strong relationship with the music? I do. I, I, I think the people that take the time to do that and interpret what they see and then put it into their songs and tunes, um, I think they, they kind of, that's a really strong thing to say. Uh, and I think that the people that listen to the music have a good understanding of it because it is so expressive. Yeah. So the landscape actually, you believe that comes out in the in the sound? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and maybe that's just my way. But when I 
I had a quick flick through some books of Scottish tunes and uh, a lot of them are named after people. But there are places, you know, places that people go and revisit that mean something to them and they want to remember it and they want to tell other people about it and the way to do that is to write a tune. I think the type of tunes we have, obviously reels and jigs and things are common, but the Straths Bay and pipe, the pipe music, which I, you know, I just adore it. So pipe music just has that, the intricacy of like the tunes themselves, the notes, the tuning of the pipes, whether it's solo or pipe band, they say something that nothing else can say. You know, and the fiddles try and copy it, and there's a lot of pipers and bands now. It's quite, it's mm. always been trendy, but even more so now, I think mm. it's utilised a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think that's. The other thing that's very Scottish about Scottish music. Yeah, um, I think obviously because of technology, people have become uh, two opposites. People have become very generous and that they're they're putting their music on for people to hear, to learn, to copy. Uh, and the other side of it is sometimes it's done and people are you know uh, upset by that. Uh, but I do think that in general musicians have become more generous with what they've got and they want to share it. From a personal point, that's how I've found. I think in years gone by, everyone had their kind of, especially in this sort of dance band scene, they had their uh, books of dances, their music, and it was like a piece of gold. And if you ask for a copy, you know, you know you'll have to find it elsewhere. I don't, I don't hear that so much now. I think there is this kind of people want to collaborate and you know. Um, sure. Aye, and especially people that compose. Yes. Side of it. Yeah, BBC Alba seem to have really raised the profile in, in a huge way, and a lot of people are benefiting from that. People that can't get out anymore and go to, they can't afford to go to live gigs or whatever, you know, and uh, or they live in an island and they can't get there. And it also introduces it to a new audience of people that have never heard it before, and that's really important. Sure. And I think in general, uh, people want to be seen with instruments, whereas when I was learning, it was like. Hide your fiddle. We on the school bus for a week, <laughs> you know, and now it's and now it's I play the fiddle and yeah, you know yeah. I'm happy to do that. So I think in general it's 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 moving with the times and it and it's going to do that naturally. You know things like Simon Tumour's Distill Weekends and things uh, encourage composing and that is vital. Funding is vital. You know there's not there's not often a lot of money to make as a traditional musician. So you have to you have to be able to multitask to do your own bit, but you know it's good to be able to go and try and get a bit of funding to, mm. to try something out that you've not done. So I, I you know I, I think it's it's in good hands, yeah. Good, thanks a lot.